hello and welcome back to the channel on today's tutorial i'm going to be sharing with you how to draft a conical victorian corset with a front lacing bar so if it's your first time viewing my channel please hit on the subscribe button don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so let's dive right into today's video so i've marked out my vertical measurement which includes my shoulder to bust shoulder to under bust shoulder to waistline and my top length now i'm going to mark my shoulder divided by two now my shoulder is 14 inches divided by two i have seven i'm not adding half to this pattern because we are not attaching sleeve to it i'll go down by one inch and after going down by one inch i'm going to go ahead to connect and draw my shoulder slope or shoulder slant so from there the next step is you just want to mark out your basic neckline for those that are attaching yoke to this dress for but for the pattern we have on the thumbnail there is no yoke to the dress now i'll just go ahead to outline after drawing out the neckline i'm going to go ahead to connect for the shoulder slope to mark it all out now i'll be finding my chest line to get your chest line is your bust side conference divided by six plus 1.5 inches so i'll go ahead and i will mark what i have on the shoulder which is seven inches because i just want to have a straight line at this point i'll go ahead to connect and after connecting i'm going to go ahead to place my ruler and i'm going to rule a straight line at that point and i'm going to go ahead to divide my armhole into two and i'll mark my bust side conference divided by four at this point giving me 8.3 and i'll go ahead to place my french curve at that point and i'll connect from the armhole down to the shoulder and this is what i have at this point and i'll go ahead to outline my armhole area of the dress next is to mark my dart intake and i'm going to go ahead to mark my nipple to nipple divided by two which is seven inches divided by two i have 3.5 inches and i'll go ahead to mark it all the way down after i'm done marking i'm going to place my ruler and i'm going to connect and i will rule out a straight line at this point after i'm done ruling out the next step i'm going to take is to go ahead and i will divide what i have here into two and i'll go ahead to mark so from the shoulder i'm going to go ahead to connect it down to my chest line this way which will be serving as a guide when i'm marking out my dart intake i'll go ahead and mark my dart intake of one inch on both sides for a plus size go ahead to mark 1.5 inches now i'm going to rule a straight line connecting and after that i'll connect it to the lower part of this pattern this way so after i'm done connecting that the next step i'm going to take is to go ahead to pick my french curve and i'll place connecting from my under bust to my bust i'll repeat the same process at the other side of my pattern this way i'll go ahead and use my marker and i'll go ahead to connect it all the way to the lower part and i'm also going to repeat it on the other part of my pattern this way so now i'm going to go ahead and mark two inches i'll be using that as where my dress or pattern will start and i will rule a line at that point so i'm going to go ahead and mark the dart intake of one inch at both sides so if you don't even have much post you can go ahead and use 0.5 or 0.75 but i'm just going to leave it this way now i'm going to place my french curve connect from that point down to my under bust this way uh, at the other side also so this is what i have after i'm done connecting so i'll go ahead and use my marker and i'll go ahead to rule it out and this is what i have so now i'm going to go down by half inch from my chest line so this is not a standard but working with what i have here and i'm just going to use a freehand sketch to draw out what i have looking at the neckline you notice that it's not really too straight and this is what i'm drawing out at this point so now the next step you want to take is to go ahead and insert your measurement i'm going to mark my bust side conference divided by four measure what i have here at this point and i will mark and after that i'll be adding my sewing allowance to this pattern so for this pattern you're just going to make sure you use about 
one or half inch so i'm going to retrace what i have on the neckline to suit what i have on the pattern because it's not looking like it exactly so after readjusting it this is what i have so after that i'll go ahead to draw out the neckline at this point so this is what i have so what i have at the bust line i'll take it to the chest line and after that, I'll go ahead to mark my underboss side conference divided by 4, measure the dart intake, replace and add my sewing allowance at the waistline. Now we are going to snatch our waistline and we are going to use the easiest method. So my actual waistline is 28 inches. I'll be minusing 3 inches from that, giving me 25. So I'll do 25 divided by 4 and I'll mark now i'll measure the dart intake replace it and i will also mark my sewing allowance on that pattern but i forgot so i went ahead to mark my hip circumference divided by four marked and i added my sewing allowance back to my waistline so here there's no dart intake at that point i'll just be marking three inches extra to this because this is a conical corset you want to give that hip illusion at the hip line so after that i have extra half inch which will be serving as my joining allowance for the lower part of this dress so i'll go ahead and i will connect all my patterns starting from the bust down to the under bust to the waistline so i'll connect from my waist down to my initial hip point and this is what i have so now because we are trying to create a conical shape set i'll be marking it or extending it to that three inches illusion we have at the hip line so this is it and i'll go ahead to clean out my original hip measurement and after that what i'll do is to just go ahead and i'll outline my pattern in a Victorian corset, you have multiple dart intake. This is just to create that Victorian effect on the dress. So now I'm going to rule a straight line. And to make this pattern more easier for a beginner, we'll not be inserting that because we have already snatched our waistline. Because if we start snatching with an additional dart on this pattern, it might be too advanced for a beginner to understand. So now we are going to go ahead to alter the pattern but before we go ahead and do that i'll go ahead to cut out this pattern so that we'll have the exact part that we are working on so for this pattern i'm going to go ahead to insert my bust that my bust that is 1.5 inches but i'm using two inches in this case so i want to make sure that the bust part is very firm so you can go ahead to do the exact thing that i did or just use your exact bust dart my exact bust dart is 1.5 inches so what is bust dart and how can you get that that is the difference between your front and back so the difference between my front and back is 1.5 but i'm using two inches because i don't have much bust so that it's going to hold it very well or tighten it very well at the bust area so this is not applicable to everybody especially if your bust is on the big size so now i'm just going to cut through my bust that because i'm going to be blending it actually so after i'm done cutting out my pattern this is what i have so now you're going to blend your bust that this way take your pattern take it up this way and if the side is not blending go ahead to blend it so whatever i have on the other side i'm just going to rule it out as you can see my pattern paper is a little light and transparent i can actually see my pattern on the other side so i'll go ahead to trace it all out now after i'm done tracing out my pattern this is what i have so let's go ahead and blend this part i'm just going to take it up use my cello tape and hold it down so if you don't have a solo tape you can go ahead to use paint to hold it down or gum to hold it down by the side whatever you have just make sure that you blend in the bust that this way with this bust that it will help hold your bust or make the pattern firm by the sides so now looking at the line at the center we are going to be creating a lacing bar at the center this way so that's why you're going to rule a line at that point 
So before we continue, I'm going to go ahead, place my tape and I will be going up by two inches at this point. So now I'm going to connect with my freehand sketch and draw out the shape we have. So at this point, I'm going to make sure it's a bit straight and then connect it down to the back this way. After that, I'll just go ahead to use my marker to outline it. Now this is the shape I have at this point and I'm going to go ahead to cut out my pattern. So this is what I have at this point. This is what it looks like. And I'm still going to go ahead to fold it up and we're going to work on the center. So I'll be going in by 0 0.25 inches because we have already snatched our waist. We don't want to go in a little more. So I'll blend it down to the lower part and take it up this way. So this is what I have and I'm just going to go ahead to use my marker to draw it out. And on the other side, I'll also repeat the same process. Make sure I make those marks on those exact ones I did at the back and I'm going to trace it out. I'll place my ruler, connect to the lower part and also connect to the upper part this way. After I'm done connecting, I'm going to go ahead to cut out those parts that I have marked out. And at that point, that is where we'll be creating our lacing bar. So the lacing bar doesn't really mean that you're going to cut out like two or one inch like, like we normally do at the back pattern. This is just to create an opening at the center. The lacing bar here serves as a design actually for the corset. So this is what I have at this point. And I'm just going to make a dot to indicate that this part is going to be the lacing bar area that we have in front. So just like I said, this lacing bar is a sort of design actually for this corset because you're still going to lace your corset from the back. So after this, the next step I'm going to take is just to go ahead and I will label my pattern so that I don't misplace each part for the other side. So now I'm going to go ahead to cut out my pattern. So if you find this tutorial very interesting and educative, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on the subscribe button. And if you have any question concerning this particular pattern, please leave your question at the comment section. So now after this, we're going to move over to the back pattern of this dress. So for the back pattern, I've gone ahead to mark out all the basic measurements. So the length of the back is looking shorter. Remember that we used a bust that's at the front part of this dress. So the front length is 22 inches minus 2 inches bust that we have 20 inches. So in our next video, we'll be cutting a 360 Victorian corset with yoke. I'll be doing a detailed explanation of the difference between the front waistline and the back waistline. So next, you're going to mark the nipple to nipple divided by 2 to draw your dots. And I'm just going to go ahead to mark all that out. After marking that, I'm just going to place my ruler and I'm going to rule a straight line. So now, after doing this, I'm just going to rule out my chest line because that is where my pattern is going to start. I'll be marking half inch on both sides of my waist and I'm going to connect. So note the front waistline and the back waistline is not exactly the same. So after drawing the dots, I'm going to go ahead to insert my measurements at the bust. I'll mark the bust circumference divided by 4 at the sewing allowance. At, at the under bust with this pattern, I'm not supposed to insert my under bust measurement. So just for beginners in the house, I'm going to mark my under bust circumference divided by 4. Measure the that intake, replace it, and at the waistline, I'm going to mark the waist circumference divided by four. Measure the that intake, replace it, and I'll mark my sewing allowance. So on this part, I'll be marking the hip circumference and I'll be marking the three inches and half inch also together for the conical hip effect. So after that, I'll go ahead to connect my pattern this way. And this is what I have. Now I'll use my marker to outline it. So now the next step I'm going to take is to go ahead and rule another line at this point. After that, I'll go up by two inches just like we did at the front. 
and i'm going to connect it this way so while i was doing this i actually made a mistake at this point instead of going up by two inches i actually went up by three inches so i did a correction after i was done marking out my back bodies so this is the little correction that i made and i'll be showing it at the end of the video so before continuing i went ahead to label my pattern and i'll go ahead to cut out the remaining part of my pattern so now i'm going to go down by half inch just to make sure at the back it doesn't pop up while you're wearing the dress so after i'm done cutting out my dress this is what i have for the back bodies and now i'm going to go in by 1.5 at this point and i'll go in by half at this point now i'll place my ruler and i will go ahead to connect my pattern this way so after connecting i'm just going to rule out that line that point will be serving as the lacing bar area of this dress so i'll go ahead and i'll cut this out and we'll go ahead to do the correction for the back so i added another plain paper to this point this way after that instead of marking out two inches i marked out three inches now i'll be replacing one inch from this point right i'll just blend it down replace one inch from this point and i'll connect it back up this way and i will connect it to this part of my pattern so this is what i have i don't know if it's looking too good but i'll just go ahead to blend it out when i'm cutting out with my scissors so this is just to replace the one inch that i mistakenly cut out from the hip point so after that i'll go ahead just to cut this out so the reason why we are replacing this mistake is just to make sure that the hip point of the back matches with the hip point we have at the front part so with this we have come to the end of today's tutorial please join us in our next video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed please hit on the subscribe button thanks